going on guys? Today we will be starting an air suspension install on the Mustang. All right guys, so you heard right. I am installing air suspension on my car. I have never owned a car with air suspension and I've never installed it on any car. So this is gonna be a learning experience for everyone. I have always wanted a car with air suspension. I love uh, the look of low cars, but I know it's also a huge pain to drive a car that is really low. So air suspension seems to be the logical choice. I know not everyone loves it, but I think air suspension has come a long way as far as handling and reliability. So again, this is not a daily driver anyway, so if I have a few issues, it's not like it's gonna be putting me out and I can't uh, you know, get to work or get to where I need to be. So first things first, I'm gonna start tearing into these boxes and uh, see what we're dealing with. All right, so I got everything pulled out of the boxes and it appears as if everything is here. So my basic plan is going to be setting up everything in the trunk first, mounting the compressor, the manifold, and the tank just where I want it. And then from there, I'll start running the air lines, the power lines. So lastly, once I have all of the lines run, then I'll finally be uninstalling my stock suspension and then putting in the airbags. But first I'm gonna open up the trunk and see where I really wanna place everything. All right, I've decided I would rather not lose my spare tire. A lot of people like to put the compressor and the manifold down in the spare tire area. But I like the idea of having a spare tire at all times. So what I'm gonna do is I think mount the compressor and the manifold over here. So this is the, uh, the passenger side. Something like this with the compressor and the manifold vertically, something like that. So I think what I'm gonna use is some plywood to actually make a, a right angle there. So first I will try to design it in cardboard and then make sure everything fits and then I can translate that into the uh, plywood.
So I made a rough mock-up of the mounting plate out of cardboard, and it seems like it's gonna work pretty well. Have the compressor sitting there horizontally and the manifold here vertically. So now I'll use this template uh, to cut out the wood and uh, build the mount. It's gonna be pretty simple. Just use some three quarter inch plywood, uh, maybe a two by three in the corner to give it some more support. Uh, and that should be it. I've now got both of my pieces of wood cut. So next up, I will be marking and drilling the holes to mount the compressor. And then I'll be marking and drilling holes to mount this piece of wood to the car itself. So now what I'm gonna do is actually be counterboring the bottom side of the, uh, the mount plate. So this way the screws will be up inside because this surface needs to stay smooth. I can't have anything protruding out of it because of the surface that it's mounting to inside the trunk. stuff people notice though <laughs> when you're at the show and your trunk surface man he even painted the screw heads yeah like what show am i at the trunk <laughs> you can have some screw belly d's and some oh stuff. yeah and some freaking subs back uh, there sub, bro?
I'm going to start prepping the tank to go in. So that'll be putting all of the fittings on. Once I get those on, I'll head inside the car and I'll have to mark and drill some holes as to where I'm gonna mount it. I've now got the air tank uh, ready to install. So I've got all the fittings on. I'm actually gonna be installing it upside down like this. So that is why my filter is down in this direction. So I've got my filter. I've got a couple ports blocked off here and on the bottom. And then on this side, I'm gonna be using this as the drain fill valve. And that also connects to the pressure relief valve. And then this is going to be the uh, port that goes to the compressor itself. So I did drill some new holes in the bottom here because where I'm mounting it does not have enough space for the two holes that were already there. So now I'm going to take it into the trunk and mark the holes in the bar where I'm going to be mounting it. It's actually the bar that has uh, the speakers in it. I think maybe you call it the accessory bar or something like that. It's above the trunk. So I'm going to mark and drill those and then I can mount this up. So I've now got the tank mounted in its final position. I've also got all of the lines run to the tank. Now have the compressor and the manifold in its final location and mounted solid to the car. So next up, we're gonna run the lines for the bags and also gonna run the uh, wiring harness from the manifold up to the battery. And then after that, we'll start with taking off the stock suspension and starting to put in the bags.
So up here in the front passenger side, you can see uh, coming through the grommet in the footwell, I've got the wiring to the battery. So that goes right from the footwell in, and there's a little hole actually right here that you can feed right under the battery and then come up right on top of the battery. So that worked out pretty well. And here I have the airline actually running through. This was the grommet for the antenna, for the radio antenna, and I definitely don't use that. I took the antenna off a long time ago. So I pulled that antenna wire through and then I reused the grommet for the airline hose so that actually protects it from the metal. Uh, there's the connection to the actual suspension and this will all get covered up with the fender liner. So the driver's side is the exact same except there's no wiring on that side. It is just the airline. So I ran the airline through this grommet uh, on the driver's side. All right guys, so it was a little difficult to film everything while we were doing it because a lot of it was inside the car. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a overview of what we did. So first off, we mounted this tank, which is actually kind of difficult, especially if you're by yourself. I had to hold it up there and try to mark where the holes need to be. I actually ended up marking and drilling one on each side and then holding it up there with a couple bolts in to mark the other two holes. So that worked out actually pretty well. I would definitely suggest oversizing the holes a little bit because it's going to be hard to get all four holes to line up perfectly. So that's just a, uh, a nut and a bolt connection. It's definitely helpful to have someone hold it up there for you while you add the hardware. So you saw how I built the uh, mounting plates here and it actually turned out really solid. Like this upper section does not move at all uh, where the manifold is mounted. So I actually mounted the compressor and the manifold onto that plate before putting it in the car. So that plate is secured to the car with four carriage bolts. It's hard to see all of them, but there's two there, one there, one there. So those go the whole way through the trunk. I drilled holes in the trunk to underneath the car where I have the nuts. And it's actually out of the way. If you look like when you're looking in the trunk, you don't see it at all. It's the whole way over in the right side here. Uh, and then I'll probably adjust how the carpet sits uh, once I put the spare tire back in and uh, just have the carpet go right up to this front edge. So first off, we ran all the lines for the tank. So we actually ran everything up here into this hole up into this accessory bar so that then it could come down where it needs to here on the tank. That's the compressor in there. And then on this side is the filter with the line then going up and back to the manifold. And then I've also got the uh, the drain line. So on this side is the fill drain. This has the uh, pressure relief valve, which I have sitting right here. And then that has the Schrader valve that you can manually fill the tank. And then the drain line off the filter just comes down. I ran it with this existing wiring here. 
and then it goes here and this was an existing grommet that I just put a hole in that is in the spare tire compartment. So I have the drain line for the filter there. So then this other line you see here actually runs to the exhaust port on the manifold. So those are two places where water could be coming out. So you're supposed to run that out of the car and that's a really good spot. Next up was running the lines to the front of the car. So first was the driver's side. We ran that line up through this accessory bar again, and then it actually comes down here and then runs under the back seat. So I'm now inside the car and here's the tank and there's the accessory bar. So the, the front driver's side line comes through there, comes down, and I ran it under where the uh, back seat hinges. And then I just ran it along with the, this existing wiring right underneath. Zip tied it pretty close to there because I didn't want the back seat hitting it. And then I just ran it kind of behind this plastic here. And then it goes under here, through here. And then I took, took these panels off and just ran it with existing wiring up and in. And then up under the footwell there is where you find the grommet that goes into the wheel well. Uh, and that's the same on both sides. There's a grommet there. So then for the rear driver side bag, I actually ran the line the same spot and then it comes down right here. So this is where you have to drill a hole to get access to the bag port. You have to enlarge this hole and then actually drill through the second sheet metal. So you enlarge the first one and then you keep going and go through the second piece of sheet metal. So that's actually the stud on the top of the bag. So you put that in place and then you also have to make sure that the port on the top of the bag lines up with the hole you drilled here so that your line can go straight in. So then as you can see, the passenger side is the exact same. I would definitely suggest uh, holding these wires up when you drill those holes. We put a piece of wood under these wires to make sure you're not uh, drilling into the wires and that's the same on both sides. So then for the passenger side front bag, you're also going to be running the all of the wiring harness with that line. So that's a bigger bundle here. This is everything. So you've got power for the compressor, you've got the signal wire to turn on the compressor, and then you've got your USB cable that goes to the controller, and then this is the actual airline that goes to the bag. So I ran that kind of the same way with this wiring under the back seat, and then it just follows here. So it goes behind that plastic, and you can actually see right here is where I cut the carpet a little bit to pull out the USB cable. So that's gonna be going to the controller. So I ran that under the passenger seat here and then just pulled up this plastic here on the center console and ran it up into that. So all you have to do actually is take out these two screws here on the center console and it pops up. And then you can see where you're feeding the wire. And I fed the wire in there and then I took off this little panel here, it just pops off. That's the panel to adjust your e-brake. So I pulled the wire up through the center console and then in through that panel, I just had to take a little chunk out of the corner there to bring the wiring right in here. I may be mounting the controller somewhere else permanently at some point, but for now, I just wanna keep it in here out of the way. The one thing to consider when you're routing that USB cable in your center console is to make sure it's not gonna get pinched by any moving parts, which would really just be the uh, the e-brake. So just watch where that's routing, maybe zip tie it off to something, and then you can bring it right in here to the center console. So now it's finally time to put the wheels back on. I think I'm going to also put some air into the tank manually. Uh, that's kind of suggested just so the compressor doesn't have to fill it from zero. And then I think before you put it on the ground, you're supposed to power it up and make sure the bags have at least like 50 PSI before you put it fully back on the ground. So I'll do all that and then I'll have to run through the calibration process in the controller and uh, check for any leaks and try to get the ride height set to where I'd like to drive, which is probably pretty similar to where the lowering springs had me set at and go from there.
So here is the final look of the trunk. I was able to just cut a small piece out of this liner on the passenger side here, and it kind of tucked in behind the, the uh, mounting plates I used. It ended up with a really clean look. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Of course, this isn't a show car. I mean, I just wanted to get a clean install done and leave a lot of trunk space. And as you can see, if you're just sitting here standing, you can't even see anything. You don't see the compressor or the tank. Uh, not until you get down lower, you can see the tank under there. But it's nice that it's still up out of the way a little bit. And if you know, I put anything down here, uh, luggage or groceries or whatever, uh, there's there's no real issue of hitting anything. Um, don't really need to worry about knocking anything loose. Everything's out of the way. So I'm really happy with how that came out. Alright guys, so here it is, aired out as far as I can go right now. I knew that my fenders would be in the way, in the front and in, definitely in the back. You can see in the back here, it's like on top of the tire, which I knew was going to happen. And the front almost kind of tucks in, but not quite. I'm definitely thinking I'm going to make some modifications to the front fenders. I need to bump them out a little bit, at least up on top. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with this install and the overall look, honestly, it's like so much different. It might not look that much different in video, but in person, it looks a whole lot better. It's really probably only like an inch lower all around compared to what it was. But I mean, even that, it just makes the car look so much better in my opinion when it's not so high up off the ground. And I'm really looking forward to getting these fenders figured out so that I can drop it down even lower. There's plenty more drop I can do. My only limiting factor in the front right now is gonna be, I don't know if you can see, but there's pipes from the turbo kit uh, that hang pretty low. I can still go down at least another inch in the front and the back I can go down probably, I don't even know, probably two more inches um, until my exhaust might hit. So that's it for today, but I'm really looking forward to this next phase of my car. I have a bunch of ideas that I want to implement. Definitely going to need to make some changes to the front fenders, like I said. And you know that I definitely have something planned for the rear here, uh, because this obviously won't work. It really doesn't look too bad the way it is. Uh, it's <laughs> sticking out a little bit too much, and I knew that from the beginning. But this car is still a work in progress, um, but I'm really happy with how it's coming along. And I'm really pleased with the overall install of the air suspension. So until next time, see you guys later. Thank you.